This is such a wonderful film. Thank you for making it. Oh, pleasure. Thank you for watching. <laughs> it's a miracle it got made, I feel like. So, yeah. How so? How is it a miracle that it got made? Tell me more. Um, well, it's in most countries, I think, in the world, um, if you propose a story that involves uh, children and homosexuals in the story, it's a tricky proposition. Um, and, you know, I think Macedonia is sort of complicated uh, in the way that I think yeah, the majority of the countries in the world are. Um, so I wrote this a long time ago. I didn't really um, pitch it much because I didn't think it was something that could get made or financed uh, for those reasons, uh, primarily because, you know, uh, in the economically developed West, uh, things like subtitles are, you know, dangerous and a no-go zone, whereas places where subtitles are less of a problem, uh, the subject matter of the film was more of a problem. So there was just this happy confluence of events that made this film viable uh, at the time that it was. And yeah, very happy we got the financing when we did. And yeah, it's now remarkable, I think, to all of us, both in the cast and crew, that, you know, uh, this, this movie, a bunch of chaotic queers in Macedonia, you know, cancer and subtitles, you know, music and dancing in between um, is now getting released by, yeah, Focus Features in America and then Universal outside of here. So, yeah. It's wonderful. It's great. Uh, I understand that the the genesis or the kind of spark for the idea for the film came from uh, a photograph from a, a post on, a, on Facebook from your friend or something of that sort. Can you elaborate? Yeah, it was uh, posed by Tony Ayres, who's a veteran uh, Australian uh, filmmaker, queer filmmaker himself, um, and, and a good friend. And he posted years ago uh, just a, a photo from his youth when, when he first moved to Melbourne and he moved into a house, a share house with his boyfriend and eight gay women. Um, and just one time randomly, I think it was like 2013 or something, he posted this photo. And I, it was just a, you know, day in the life. Uh, it wasn't a very specific, uh, it was just genuinely just a snapshot from the everyday. And I thought I looked like such a fun space to be in. Um, and especially because at that time in my life, I was not in fun spaces in my day to day life. I was doing lots of day jobs I did not want to be doing. Uh, I remember seeing that photo and going, oh, I want to spend some time there, like, you know, in this place. And I think of your wood as well. And I just updated the story to like a hectic queer household, but in the present day, um, the kind of, you know, feels like a cocoon and like a safe space from the rest of the world uh, where you can kind of live your life to your, you know, to the fullest and to its messiest. And I shifted it, you know, to a country that, yeah, I, I know well, but I also know is similar to a lot of other places in the world where it is still very complicated to be queer and kind of, yeah, run off with that. <laughs> Nice, nice. So you grew up in your, um, you grew up in uh, Macedonia, and then you went back to the country to film this film. So what was that like returning to the country that you grew up in? I know that you'd gone to Australia after that. And so what was it like to return to your home base? Um, I go back a lot. Like I'd, I'd already made a short film uh, there a few years ago. And, you know, I knew everyone in the, uh, well, I knew a lot of people in the film industry already from years ago. And uh, I, I spent a lot of time there. I mean, we uh, I migrated to Australia when I was 12, but I'm still in Macedonia pretty much every year for a little bit. And it doesn't really feel, um, uh, I, I do feel a bit like a foreigner when I go back now, because, uh, you know, there's a whole part of my brain and my life that, you know, doesn't really fit in there. But I also, I don't know, I also still feel very much from there when I go, you know, I, I have a funny accent when I speak English, but when I speak Macedonian, um, this little tiny funny accent, but not quite as much. I can pass for, you know, the majority a lot easier over there. So, yeah, it was, you know, it was pretty easy. And and I do find, uh, weirdly, I do find Macedonia a lot more inspiring uh, creatively uh, than I find Australia, uh, if, if I came here from so blunt. So, you know, even visually, you know, finding places and locations I want to kind of capture um, and people and faces, I think um, it was uh, it was a joy. It was stressful to put together. But once we started filming, 
it was genuinely a joy and like i had a magical cast and crew you know we kind of all felt like a you know found family behind the camera as well you know so it really helped right right i totally get that so this film um it won the queer lion award at the venice film festival what were your thoughts when you received that award um I mean, you know, any award is, I guess, lovely. I'm not much of an awards-oriented person in general. I kind of, you know, I've been on juries myself, and you see how awards get decided, and sometimes the choice feels kind of arbitrary, you know. Uh, so I don't really invest that much meaning into these things a lot of the time. But um, it was actually nice to then meet the jury who who gave me the award, and like just to see how moved they were by this story. Uh, you know, it ultimately. With these awards, it's like you, you realize there's a bunch of people that you didn't really know before that connected so intensely with your film that that, that in itself is the moving part. And obviously, um, you know, it helps a few more people hear about it, hear about the film and hopefully track it down. Um, and yeah, uh, being at Venice Film Festival is already kind of an out-of-body experience, you know, with or without an award. <laughs> so I think... Um, yeah, it was just a bonus in the end um, to what was already a great experience. Beautiful. So take me back. You're a young kid in uh, Australia. When did film, filmmaking, uh, movies become um, a big focus for you? Why did you want to become a filmmaker? And were there any filmmakers that really stood out for you? Mm, um, oh, God. What's the short version of this because if you get me going i will not shut up for two hours so let me see the short version of this is uh so actually it's quite connected to the migration when i moved to melbourne uh when i was 12 actually um i didn't really have any friends so Catherine hepburn and ingmar bergman became my friends essentially uh literally from age 12 like i got um we lived in state housing uh, for a while at the time, and we got this like half price voucher to go to the cinema. So I went to the cinema quite often, and then uh, sort of started being curious about you know film history along the way. So I started tracking down older films through like just the local public library, uh, and became obsessive. I was watching like you know three or four hundred films a year, and it wasn't with a sense of vocation or anything. It was just kind of like my happy place, like pretty much all through high school. And at some point towards the end of high school, like uh, I had media studies as a subject uh, where you could make a short film because I had access to just equipment, like a basic mini DV camera and, you know, iMovie as an editing system. And yeah, I used that opportunity to just kind of, that was just going to be my one-off time to make a short film. But by the time I finished it, I was like, you know, my migrant uh, as a rite of passage of becoming a lawyer, doctor, engineer was just scrapped in that moment. And so I, yeah, decided to go into film school. And, you know, just a short 20 years later, I made my first feature. And 25 short films later as well, I finally made a feature. So, yeah. Right, right. Uh, what was it like for you um, growing up gay in an immigrant household in Australia? Um, were there uh, actors out in the world that really intrigued you or that um, were icons or mentors of some sort in that respect? I'm just curious. Um, um, I never really looked at uh, or still even look at film and TV and sort of see something. Or if, it, To me, it's always something that's really far away. It's a magical land of Oz. It's not something that I necessarily, you know, see myself in. Uh, and only as a kid, I didn't. Like, I think um, uh, there was a sense of definitely, like, watching queer stories helped me normalize queerness in my head, uh, you know, before I could accept, even, like, think of myself as gay. Uh, so it helped, like, watching, you know, a lot of our films and Todd Haynes's uh, purely for film nerd reasons initially, and then you know, I, I and Six Feet Under actually as well was the other big kind of uh, queer text that like, you know, n normalized it, I guess. Um, and definitely gave me a sense of, uh, 
at a time when it felt like it might be a little bit dangerous and tricky to be out uh, or to be gay, really, I kind of had this sense of like conviction that, you know, uh, it was something that was like either a neutral or a positive. Uh, so I think I got that a little bit. But no, I never looked at like actors or uh, queer figures as something that reflects on my life. Usually, to be honest, people who were involved in the entertainment business were so far away and so rich. <laughs> removed from my day-to-day -day life it felt really stupid to compare myself or like see that trajectory and go oh this is what my life is gonna be like and to me life was like something you sort of have to forge for yourself and find a way through it um I think it was more just like yeah like uh, seeing queer stories sort of helped me kind of come to you know I, I embrace my own queerness for what it was but then I didn't really. I don't really look to other people as role models to this day. <laughs> to be honest, I feel like everyone's life is very specific to themselves. Very, very true. Um, how do you feel? Uh, of an age was a spectacular movie as well. I love that. And how do you feel that movie um, changed you or um, helped you move forward with your future endeavors? Or and were you surprised by its success and how well it was received? I'm surprised right now that you call it a success so well received. I thought, I thought it was okay. I didn't really see it as, you know, hugely successful, to be honest. Or, I don't know, to me, the success was like in, in the sense of going to screenings and like people coming up to me afterwards. And, you know, a lot of the time it was gay men of various ages, which was great, but also even women, gay or straight, going, coming up to me and going, like, how did you know my story? You know, um, and like just being in tears about this experience that, you know, it's not autobiographical, that's not my life, but obviously it's something that's very specific to uh, my emotional life from a young age, I should say. So the fact that it speaks to people from all around the world, even just like, you know, I mean, I'm in New York at the moment and just like um, someone came up to me here yesterday in a cafe going, are you the filmmaker, Gordon Stalovsky, which to me is already like very strange. I'm not like used to getting recognized, you know um and this person was so sort of moved by of an age uh, they, uh, they told me like the first time they watched it they watched it immediately right after so to me like again someone who could connect that emotionally with a story that i thought was you know be interesting to maybe my husband my parents and two other people in the world is is remarkable um but in terms of my trajectory as a filmmaker to be honest like i'm not i don't think it's made things more difficult than this um uh, I'm not sure how much, yeah, I don't, I, don't really, I don't really look at it that way, but also when you're in the middle of it, it's part, like I genuinely don't have a holistic sense of what this film means in a grander scheme because I'm just so in the middle of it, you know, I don't have the distance, maybe five years from now, I'll understand uh, if there's been a benefit or anything, but right now, yeah, I'm just looking to make the next film, essentially, and yeah. So speaking of the next um, film or upcoming things, what are you excited about next? Uh, and if you had, you know, your greatest options in front of you and all the resources you needed, what would you love to make? Um, well, I'm in a fortunate position in the, the film I, want, uh, I really desperately want to make next looks like it might be happening soon. I'm not really... I think supposed to talk about it um, in too much detail, but it's something I wrote um, that is a drama that has no multiverses or uh, skinny, attractive young people hacking each other to bits. And I think at the moment it's really difficult to make a film that doesn't have one or both of those ingredients in it. Um, so the fact that I might be getting this opportunity to just make a film about people <laughs> and feelings <laughs> you know, life uh, feels like a very special thing. And it's exactly the film, you know, I, I want to make. Um, so I'm working uh, on that film, hopefully uh, coming through next. And I'm working with an actor I love on another film I've written for him that, again, um, that's a slightly more genre-y concept, but it's still a very human story that I'm very connected to. Um, that again, you know, I work myself and will hopefully direct. Um, so I, I don't know. I don't really have a, a dream scenario beyond be those two films. Um, there's another couple of projects I'm talking to people about that are in a very early stage. Um, again, very human stories. Um, 
in this case with a particular actress I love. So um, I don't know. There's not, there's nothing that I'm you know thinking after that doesn't look uh, beyond that. Essentially, uh, we'll see. If I if I make another film, I'll already be ecstatic. You know, I expect it to be you know going into organic farming by 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 now. So I was not expecting it to be a functioning filmmaker. So I think at the moment I just want to feel grateful for what's go what's happened so far. You know, hopeful for the next couple of years. I love it. I love it. Well, it's great to connect with you. Thank you, and thank you for this wonderful film. It's great. Oh, thank you, Greg. I'm so glad you know connected with you as well. So I hope to chat to you soon with the next one.